Good evening. Hello. I had two questions. In your experience, what is the best way to assess poverty? Because in microfinance, you see sometimes ultra poor, the middle section, and then there are people who, who are not so poor, but they uh, affect group dynamics. And the second, in, in all these years, have you seen a favorable impact on, on the gender balance and gender relations in Bangladesh because of microfinance and, and the related businesses that you have started? Sure. Yeah. Uh, start with Grameen Bank again. I cannot answer for everybody. Our policy is we train our staff to first start with the poorest person in the village. So his or her first duty is to go around. It's not just lend money to a poor person. Just search around, find the poorest family in the neighborhood. Somebody says, why am I a very poor person? Give me a loan. So again, the Grameen Bank principle is never discuss anything in your office. Your office is just for you, not for your uh, customers or anybody. So find out where she lives. So your job is to go to her place and do the discussion, not in your office, not in your, on the road. So you go to her and you look at her house, how it looks like. Immediately you know she's not the real poor person. She's poor, not as poor as you would like to get started. Then you say, do you have anybody else in this neighborhood who has a single room, a leaky roof? very poor. She, yeah, I have two such people around this. So she becomes our guide to take us to those leaky roof, single room house. And you go there, yes, that's a single room, leaky roof. But she has some bed or something, furniture. So we said, is there anybody, no furniture, leaky roof and single room? She said, yeah, there's, but it's the far end, so let's go. So you start with the imagination that this is the condition, that house is just, it's not really a house, it's a kind of an image of a house. People somehow live there. So that's where our start to begin with that. Once you have finished all those people without furniture, without this, this, this then you go leaky roof with some furniture. Or no furniture, but a solid roof or something. Which, because roof is a big indicator of your economic situation. Bangladesh is a monsoon country. So it's a pouring rain most of the time. So this is the search process. So we are not looking for, this is not an academic exercise, how many types of poor you have. No, just practical thing. Where do you begin? And gradually build it up as you go around. When you finish this layer, you go to the next layer, go to the next layer, and so on. And keep them in waiting. After we finish this, and we'll come to you. We are not saying we don't come to you. You will come, but don't you think we should go to them first? And they said, yes. And she helps you. So this is, this is the one we do. Impact. First of all, Grameen Bank is owned by the borrowers. The, all those women that we are talking about, they are actually the owners of the bank. And today, we lend out uh, every year, this, is the, this year will be about one and a half billion dollar in those tiny loans. And this comes from the deposits of the bank. We don't take money from outside, from the government, from the international agencies or anybody like that. So people put deposits and we lend the money to the poor people. And part of that deposit is from the borrower themselves, the women themselves. Because it's again part of the Grameen Bank system. Before you take a loan, as soon as you join a Grameen Bank group, which is five women together, you, each one of you have to open a bank account so that you can save every week. Whatever tiny little money you can save, doesn't matter. Amount is immaterial, but you have the, you build up the habit of saving whatever you can get. It may be a penny, it's okay for us. So everyone has a savings account. Some of them have multiple savings accounts for different reasons. So we have that, every one of them. So they save every week. When four, eight and a half million people save every week, whatever it is, it becomes big money. This year, 2014, is a very significant year for Grameen Bank because at the middle of the year, 
the total amount that they have deposited in the bank, all the borrowers, far exceeds the, the total loan they have taken from the bank. It's an amazing situation. Table is turned. When they tell me that we, our borrower is so many, etc., etc., discussion in the borrower, our borrower, I said, don't use the word borrower anymore because you lose your right to say, tell them that they are borrowers. Because in reality, you are the borrower. They are the lender because they have more money given to you than the money you've given to them. So net borrower is yourself. So it's a complete turnaround. The reason I'm saying, if you're looking for impact, the fact that all these poor women have more than one and a half billion people in the bank account is, is, a, is a balance. It's not something accumulated amount. It's a balance today. It is something. And they get their uh, dividends from the bank. That's another one. Their children are educated. So you, you see a Grameen Bank borrower and her daughter side by side. They look alike, just like a mother and a daughter anywhere in the world. They wear clothes similarly in the same village, stay the same way. And you, your first reaction is maybe she helps her mother and she grew up together. So when I go there, I tell, talk to her. And I say, what, you help your mother? You should take care of your mother? She says, well, sorry, I can't do that because I live in the nearest town. So what do you do there? See, because I'm a medical doctor. Suddenly it gets into your head that the mother is illiterate, but the daughter is a medical doctor and she practices there. Then always a similar situation comes and you have the question, her mother could have been a doctor too. There's nothing wrong with her mother. But nobody gave her a chance to go to school. It's not her fault. She has the same capability as her daughter. Maybe born, no, 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 so at least equal capability. But she never went to school. So who made this all this difference between one generation? One is totally literate. They have the same look, same presentations, but one is something else. So this is the kind of differences the second generation is making. And last point I would like to make quickly, you're familiar with the MDGs, Millennium Development Goals. Number one goal is to reduce poverty by half by 2015. And Bangladesh is a very lucky country. It achieved that number one goal two and a half years before the terminal date of 2015. So it has reduced poverty by half by the middle of last year. So if the poverty has gone down nationally and to that level, maybe all these things that we are talking about have some contribution to do that. Some positive things happen to them. So you go by person by person. You, you, your indicators that they said, the house which is a leaky roof, no furniture, and single room and all that. Now you go back because that's where you started. And we go back to see, we have 10 indicators to fill, see what difference has made to this family. Does she have a solid roof now? Yes. Does she have bed to sleep rather than sleep on the floor? Now she has a bed. Okay, you're done. Does she have access to clean water? Yes, she has. Does she have enough savings in the bank? She can cope with the emergencies? Yes, she has. Does she, did she send all her children to school? Yes, she has. So there are 10 indicators. If all the 10 has been fulfilled, we say this family has moved out of poverty. That's our simple way of looking at it. No very fascinating uh, uh, research technology, methodology or nothing. Just to look visually and say, yes, 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 that's it. So this is how we measure that.